Okay, so uh, about two months ago, I finished both Heisig books. If you don't know what Heisig is, this video is not for you. This is for people who are already kind of into language learning and know what the different methods are. Uh, I went through all 3,000 characters in about three months, like just under, I think. Um, my general pace was about 50 characters a day. Uh, that was like my consistent um, and if I got under that I would make it up the next day by uh, doing like 75 or something. Um, I just wanted to go over my general thoughts on the book, lessons learned, what I would do if I had to do it over again. Okay, so why did I choose Heisig over rote memorization or learning the characters as a part of specific words in a, in a context, like mass closed deletions or something? Uh, my main reason is I'm a massive word cell and I just like to read. Like, I just wanted to be able to read Chinese books. It's It became like a thing with me where... My big issue is speaking and listening. It was never really reading and writing. I was always much better at that. I like learning characters to begin with. Um, but doing, like, rote memorization for characters takes a long fucking time. Like, actually cementing it. I mean, I would be going over flashcards just day after fucking day, and it really... I mean, it took, like a lot of time for these to stick. I had to use them again and again and again. And when I'm looking at subtitles, which is really kind of like the bridge to being able to like listen properly and speak, you know, um, so I can actually tell what I'm, what I'm, I'm hearing because, you know, the language has so many fucking homophones. Um, there were so many characters for like common phrases that I just didn't know. Like I, I knew probably way more characters than uh, most of my class in college and I still just could not fucking just watch a, a movie and really under like not just understand but just look at the characters and have it even if I paused like be able to just guess at what I was looking at so I really just wanted like a way like a foundation for my vocabulary because I knew that learning the meaning of the individual characters in like a sort of like English translated context doesn't actually give you the like full word. I, I knew that going into it, but I wanted to at least have an idea of what I was dealing with. So that was my main reason for picking Heisig. Um, also, I'm a very visual person and the idea of like creating this like mental image as a, as a mnemonic was uh, very appealing when I first heard about it. Um, I also just like gave it a try, pirated the ebook, gave it a try, did a few characters and, and noticed it was like clean. They were just like totally stuck in there. And I was like, okay, I feel like this can work. Um, now, <laughs> lessons learned. Okay. First of all, everything with high sig characters depends on the strength of the visualization. Like, if you fuck up the visualization and you go back and do flashcards, it's not... Like, you you can do flashcards for as long as you fucking want, and it will not... It will, it will not have even close to the same effect as if you were to just sit down and redo the story properly, okay? Like, you need to... It, it okay so if you're if you're into like ceremonial magic or like chaos magic at all that sort of sphere where you have like visualizations or any kind of like any of the weirder meditation traditions right you need like that level of visualization you need to really focus and create like a whole like all encompassing vision of this narrative right and you need to make the keywords very, very clear within that narrative. Like every element of it needs to be purposeful. Uh, it needs to be memorable. And it needs to be very vivid. Like you, the, the more, it, it wasn't even just the like, uh, 
that the scenario was necessarily that memorable. The ones that stuck the best with me were the ones that were like, I felt like that it was such an interesting story that I had to create like a colorful sort of scenario for it, right? Like I had to depict it with with so much like richness and uh, and li just little little anecdotes from my own life. Uh, that would be another good tip: is like wherever possible, just use stories from your own life. Like if you can just kind of like modify them a little bit to sort of include the keywords, but like keep the general structure of like an actual event that happened to you when you were a kid that you remember really well, it will just, you're not going to forget that. Um, another thing about stories, um, if they end up being like kind of weird or fucked up because Heisig includes a lot of like kind of fucked up stories. I mean, you kind of have to with a lot of them. I mean, like the character for utensil is like, <laughs> it's, um, like, even without his, like, uh, specific, uh, he has, like, funny definitions for different keywords for different components of the of the characters, right? Um, but <laughs> the one for utensil is, like, unambiguous. It's it's four mouths. So it's, it's one mouth on each corner. And then in the middle is just, a, is just the character for dog. Um, so that's... <laughs> Like, there's only kind of one route you can go with that, right? Uh, so, it, some of them are just going to be a little bit messed up. Um, and that's not a bad thing. Um, because when they're kind of, like, fucked up or really strange or you're like, I should not be thinking about that. This is, like, I'm, like, <laughs> degrading my own mind. Okay, maybe you are. But you're also creating a memorable story. And that's, that's not going to leave you for a while. Okay, so about the visualization method itself, Heisig only actually gives instructions, like the proper instructions, not the, the little spiel he gives at the beginning of the book, but I mean like the actual how to do a full visualization that will stick. He only gives you after like the first section of characters, like once the once he starts weaning you off of his like very sort of... Uh, uh, his his prescribed stories when he starts giving you a little bit more room to sort of apply your own um, imagination to the stories. It's only after that that he actually gives you like the full method of visualizations. And you should be doing this from the beginning. I don't know why he doesn't put it at the beginning of the book. Uh, and that method is very specifically, and, and you have to do this in order, okay? So you read the 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 uh, the keywords, right? And I'm assuming like you're this, you're thinking about a character like after the first section, because the first bunch of them he gives like little sort of like he gives full stories and then smaller, sparser stories, and then he just gives you keywords. So I'm talking about just keywords here. You look at the keywords that make up the character and its components, right? And and, may, and probably like how they're arranged. Like take that into account. You, uh, you think of the the actual like uh, keyword of the character, so the components and the keyword, and you think about both of them, right? You close your eyes, close your like actually close your eyes, and I like to just imagine the words in English uh, just sort of floating. So it would be you know component one, component two. Sort of in there, how they're arranged, you know, like ones on the left, ones on the right. And then it like turns into the, the keyword of the character you're trying to learn. So you're associating it. It's like you think of those keywords and then you think of the, the keyword for the character. So you're creating like this initial connection. And then as you sort of mull that over, there's going to be a story that's going to pop up just kind of naturally, right? Like there's some idea that's going to come just from uh, sort of just stewing on these, uh, these sort of these evocative words, right? And so once you sit with it for a while and you might, it might take a couple of minutes. Um, I, I recommend like no matter how long it takes, if you have to go slower, just go slower. Well, I'll get to that in a little bit, but um, 
once you have the, the those like keywords mulling over and you sort of have like an idea of like what the story is going to be, then you just go for it. You just like shoot, you know, your eyes are still closed and you just play it out uh, and you have the keywords, you know, you make sure that those are included in the story, that they're clear, the connection is clear. And then uh, the, the, the meaning of the word is also clear. Uh, and then once you put, once you've ran through the story and you've done it like, you know, like a nice long story, it's vivid, it's, or maybe not long, but just a quality story, quality over quantity, um, a very, a high quality story. Once you've played that out, you open up your eyes and then you say the keywords back to yourself and then you say them out loud, right? You say the keywords out loud and then the, the the main keyword, and then you write the character as you do this. Maybe do it a maybe do it a few times. He only says you need to write the character once. I, I found it helpful to do it at least twice, um, just to like, I don't know, maybe have one for like the keywords that make it up for the components, and then one for the main keyword. Um, but yeah, uh, he he should have given that from the beginning because like that's actually how you do it. If you don't do those steps, they will be a weaker. Uh, It'll it will be a weaker mnemonic. It'll be a weaker connection in your mind. Uh, so, next thing is uh, the speed. So, I did this shit like way too fast. Like, I was I had this like thing where I was like, oh, I just want to get through. It. I just want to get through it. I want to be able to just read this book, you know. Um, and uh, I ended up going at a pace of uh, fifty characters a day, as I said, but. Towards the end, I picked that up to 100 a day. And doing that while also working like 30 hours a week is just like kind of untenable. Like you just you do not have like the mental strength to keep that up. There was a lot of days where I would just, I felt like I was going to pass out. Like I was, I was like falling asleep as I was doing these visualizations, right? Um, and... I started to really like dip in quality and I was just like trying to get through it. And then when, when you do that, you have to go back and do them again. So you're actually losing time by trying to speed up. Right. And so that's why my retention is probably only at like somewhere between 60 and 75%. It's still like a huge amount of progress. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit about like what I'm able to read now. It's still a fucking amazing what I like, how much I know now but um yeah it really would it, it would have been helpful to keep it at like 25 a day like 50 is like even 50 is like for an extended period of time is kind of pushing it he he says that like 20 is on the low end but I, I really think that's like the sweet spot for creating like really high quality uh memorizations like unless you're on some kind of a deadline um I just think this is the kind of thing, as with most things with language learning, it's best to not like try to blitz it like I did. Um, this, this was kind of an experiment more than anything. And uh, yeah, I would I would say just, you know, slow and steady wins the race like this. This shit is um, it's intense. It's very intense when you have to come up with 50 stories in like an hour and a half, right? Like that is, <laughs> you really, you're, you're really stretching your, uh, storytelling abilities. Like if you ever thought of yourself as a writer, you know, there's the fucking test. Um, so yeah, go much slower than I did. Okay. So final lesson learned. Keep your imagery consistent across your stories. Um, I don't just mean the connotations of the keywords, which is what Heisig tells you about, but like the imagery, like that's where the real strength of his advice about the run character comes in play. Uh, Cause he says to make it like a very specific memorable person from your life and like, do not change which person that is. Cause if you just think of it as like the con like run is the concept of humanity or just like any person it's, just too fucking vague, even though that's what it actually means, right? But we're working with keywords. We're not working with the actual, like, hard, real meanings of the character in Chinese. Uh, and so uh, I use my best friend for the person radical. 
And those stories are, of course, like the, the most memorable, right? Um, like there's just imagining him in all kinds of situations, right? Like um, person, uh, like roof or house, uh, hundred, stay overnight, right? I can imagine my friend with a hundred of something in a house and that's staying overnight. Like that's just, there's so many weird possibilities that come up with that, right? Um, and so I really think that like when you, if you have an abstract concept, it's really better to just have like a very concrete image for what that abstract concept is going to be. Don't try to work with it on some sort of like meta level where it's like, oh, this kind of, this sort of thing happens in this story. Like maybe you could get, you could associate with a specific action, right? But it has to be like an action with a with a vivid look like it it'll look like the same thing across your stories right um i would i would not like we, with the character for longevity right uh, i remember those characters that involved the longevity radical because i made it like a very specific like old man who like kind of involves the original the original component parts right um and and so I can sort of use him in different stories as opposed to just the concept of longevity. Okay, so where am I at now? What like what did I actually get out of the thing? So my current reading level is at this point, like after having gone through all the characters, probably like a really dumb middle schooler, uh, which it was much lower before that, obviously. Um, Maybe, maybe like a dumb freshman in high school, like a really dumb freshman in high school. Uh, and a lot of the words, obviously, I don't know the exact connotation. I don't know the exact meaning um, of the two character, three character words. But I can look at it and generally guess. I can generally get a good idea of what I'm looking at. Uh, especially with like the more common words. If I'm not reading some piece of like, super intense like, like i'm not trying to read like the chinese translation of mishima or something like it otherwise it's like it's so much faster right and, and what i really noticed too is as i've been going through like reading a book i've been reading um sahara story uh uh sanhala de gusher um by uh uh san mao uh really good book uh, so far i've been uh making flashcards like out of the little out of the uh the characters I've been reading out of the the words and I noticed my retention on those words is so much stronger than it was before when I was like learning the characters through rote memorization because I, I feel like once I've once I know the connotations of these characters like putting them together is just so much easier right because it's like a lot uh, so many words in Chinese are just logical right they just make sense you know it's just this bit this bit combine the two meanings done um so yeah I, I really think it like it it might not be like super optimal right like it probably is better to just like focus on learning all the words uh, verbally first and then learning the writing system after. I think that's true of like most languages. That's that's what I've, I've heard. Um, but thinking of it as like an alphabet, which is how Heisig explains um, kanji and Hanza, uh, is like, it's, a, it's an interesting way to think about it. Like it's just a really big alphabet that you just have to learn. Like there's no way out. Um, and so you might as well just get through it, you know, and and then start building up from there. You know, learn your ABCs before you do anything else. It's just that the ABCs, there's just 3,000 of them. Um, but yeah, I can like go through the book. I can make my flashcards and I, I make great progress. I, I, um, I It doesn't feel like quite as much of a slog where you're just looking at things like, I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what the fuck. You know, it's like there's just all these lines and shit. No, it's just. I just kind of flow. So it's really valuable for that. Um, my, my ability to read subtitles is also a lot faster, although that's much harder because like trying to parse the characters is like in a much shorter amount of time is very difficult. 
but it is still better. It is still better than it was. Uh, and I do, of course, still retain new words much, much better than I did before. Uh, but yeah, so main takeaways, uh, go much slower. The visualization is everything. Uh, and honestly, like if you've looked up anything about this book, if you're thinking about doing it, uh, don't listen to like the little like Reddit guys who are like, Oh, we don't, you know, it's, it, it's not, it's not the good method. Cause they do the other way in China. It's like, I don't, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not Chinese. Right. I, I'm not learning this as a kid. Um, I might as well go with this, like kind of weird, like heavy hitting method, uh, which is specifically made for English speakers. Like, yeah. Um, d it's so much better than f trying to write the character like 5,000 times. Just give it a shot. You'll probably like it.